Let's call the regular meeting of the Mass Main District Library. Uh, Board of Trustees to order is now about 7.01 or 2 on Wednesday, March 14th, 2018. Dan, please take the roll. Karen. Here. Carolyn. Here. Dennis. Here. Diane. Here. Patty. Oh, she must be running late. Linda gave previous notice. Susan. Yes. And Tim. Here. All right. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the regular board meetings of February 21st, 2018? Motion. Do the people talk first, or? No motion. Okay. All right. Second. Yeah, All right. Motion and second. Oh. Okay, Dennis, make the motion. No, no, I just, I just wonder when the people okay. get a chance to talk. I thought it was before the minutes, but... No, Dennis. No, it's right after. Oh, it's right after. Usually it's the second thing. I forgot. I forgot. All right, so we had a motion and a second. Any discussion? Have, uh, I'll have to approve the minutes. Karen? Here. Karen? Being a yes. Yes. Um, I'll abstain. Dennis? Same here. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Tim? Yes. Fine. Then we move on to public comment. Now we have uh, someone registered for public comment. Okay. All right, fine. Uh, Dennis Martin, you registered for public comment. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Dennis Martin, 8706 North Osceola, Niles, Illinois. Just want to make a couple of comments here. As a taxpayer and resident of Niles and Main Township, I'm a big fan of transparency, especially when it comes to reporting on the money is spent at the Niles Main District Library to provide services to our taxpayers and for that in that matter, any other institution that is funded with both yours and my tax dollars. I'm always looking for a correct process to be followed and that we get the biggest bang for a tax dollar. For this reason, I'm concerned that today at our library board meeting, one of our board members, Trustee Durblick, is being denied the opportunity to have uh, two separate agenda items placed on tonight's agenda as she submitted. The library board president, Karen Diamond, refused to place those two agenda items as submitted on the agenda. The request was still denied even after I emailed Trustee Diamond that I second the importance of having Trustee Gerblitz requested items on the agenda as stated. One of the agenda items denied by the library board president has discussed the library's budget review process. The library director and others have asked for ideas and proposals, and some will say our board has discussed concerns about the budget review process in the past, so we need to move on. But the bottom line, and the results of those discussions, does not produce any process to review our budget spending. We currently do not show any department or area has budget for all of the costs and expenses for the year. We have asked that each area department provide this information so that when the board members go through the budget review process, we can understand, validate, communicate that the budget dollars all tie outs appropriately. The other agenda item that was modified is regarding a specific Illinois state statute that clearly states the board approved personal recommendations by the library director. The current library process <coughs> removed the board of their approval authority and has given the authority to the director. The intent of Trustee Durblitz's agenda item was that the board should correct this process as clearly stated in the Illinois statute. Lastly, and on a different item, I enjoyed reading the recorder's summary of the comments in the payment of bills about foods and trinkets charge, charges in the visa bill. However, I think that the point and the concern was and, and, and I'm concerned was missed by and, and the concern was missed by the recorder in her summary of what was said that night. Point well taken that there was a small, vague explanation attached to all of the food and trinkets listed on the FOIA 
Niles Main District Library Visaville. Although it'd be next to impossible to understand how these all tie back to any specific program provided by the library. My point was, is the best use of taxpayers' dollars to pay for food and trinkets for an extremely small, small percentage of Niles Main Township residents that participate in these programs, events, and, is, and also is the money being used to pay for food for the library employees. I think that would be inappropriate. And if anyone questions the reason behind my concerns for the taxpayers, all one has to do is look in their local paper to look at the large number of folks that are delinquent on their property taxes. And I'm not sure if I brought it in here, but this is a, a, just a small representation of the folks that are laid on their taxes and could lose their houses. So when they say, oh, Dennis, you're just looking to cut, I'm not looking to cut the people here. I'm just looking for things to be discussed as to where we can be a little bit more responsible. This is a lot, this is a lot of, you know, go to your local paper. There's a lot of, a lot of people got to lose out on their house. Thank you. Okay, our next uh, speaker is Mr. McCullough. Mr. McCullough. Right. I'm, I'm going to be talking on one of the subjects Dennis was talking about. The, uh, Public Library District in 1991, and um, this has to do with the part I want to talk about. It has to do with the um, section. If you want to mark it down, and check it out. 75 ILCS 16 line 30 dash 55 dot 35. The board may appoint and fix the compensation of a qualified librarian to act as the administrator of the district daily operations. The administrator may hire other employees deemed necessary by the administrator, fix their compensation, and remove those employees, subject to the approval of the board. That's not happening right now. The board has to approve every new employee. Every employee is different. One might come in here with a swastika on their head, and, and you know, the board should have a, a, a say on that. And that's not happening now. So that needs to be corrected. And that is illegal because if you go to 75 ILCS 1630-52, trustees' failure to neglect or discharge their duty, which is their duty in this first uh, clause, penalty. Any trustee, while acting as a trustee or as an officer, fails or neglects to discharge any duty imposed upon him or her by this act is guilty of a petty offense and shall be fined less, or less than $25 nor more than $100 for each offense. Now, we've probably had 50 people hired since this has been going on. All of these people, this is an offense. I'm not saying we should collect the $50 or whatever. But they all need to be revetted and reviewed. Not necessarily the firings, but all the hirings have to be reviewed in executive session, as, as the village would do with any of their employees. Thank you. And that is it for the number of, for the people who have signed up to give public comment. Okay. So we will move on to our next item, which is the treasurer's report. Tim. Okay. Um, I thought uh, generally we, we look at our expenditures, but I thought with the budget coming up, we could look a little bit more at the revenues just to refresh ourselves about those items. Um, and this is the eighth month of our fiscal year, we're 66% uh, 66 of the way through. Uh, we are currently under budget on our income by about $69,000. Um, large portion of that is the per capita, I'm sorry, if I'm on page 10, I'm on page 10, sorry. Thank you. Sorry. Are we all there? Almost. Sorry. My bad. Yeah, you are. <laughs> $69,000 under our budget, but as we all know, our revenues are largely out of our control. 
Um, so, you know, it's good to know that uh, we can budget uh, a certain amount, but we might not get whatever we budget for. Uh, per capita grant, it was budgeted for uh, 44478 We have yet to receive that. Uh, we've only got, what, three months left to our fiscal year? Uh, is it conceivable we could get it in the next fiscal year? Uh, the, some of the libraries did get it, but the directors were just comparing notes, and the majority of us by far have not. To me, if they, some of the libraries got it, that means we're all getting yeah. it, but I'm an optimist. Uh, our book sale uh, is uh, our expectations. I, I probably should be um, uh, from that group. Uh, it should be a little bit lower since we're not getting quite as much as we have thought on book sale. Uh, passports is running under budget. Obviously, we, we didn't start in January. Um, question on that, that, they raised the fee to $35? April 1st. April 1st. Are we going to get a, a percentage of that raise? All of it. Oh, oh, oh okay. Yeah, yeah, it's the execution fee that the library oh. collects to uh, process the application. Nice. So, you know, when we come to the budget time, we can uh, add that to the uh, mix. Uh, it should be noted that our investments are running $13,000 to date greater than we budgeted, so thank you very much. Great. And uh, donations reflect the amount that uh, we got for the Cubs uh, versus Sox display and then on a $100 donation. And that's that. Uh, page 11 is salaries. Uh, and, and the rest of it is pretty much as it was last month or for the several months. We're all running pretty much on budget everywhere. Uh, Library operating expenditures is well under budget at 88,000, uh, under budget of, of, of about 88,000. So that's really great. Um, and, and unless anybody's got any specific questions, I'm just highlighting page 12. I got, I got a yep. question. Sure. I, I didn't know if we were supposed to wait till you uh, You know what? Why don't you wait until I'm finished? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that would probably be better. Uh, general and admin on page 12. That category is running under budget by 34,000. Uh, page 13, our fringe benefits, again, is the same as every other. We had the one-time payment of 132000 to the uh, municipal fund that we approved in November. And uh, our page 14, the bottom line is our total expenditures are running 5600 budget. Uh, questions? Yes, I, I So, uh, did uh, did we hire anybody for uh, for for the uh, for passports? No. I was, I was just I was wondering if you could help me understand. It says annual budget of twenty five thousand. I, I I didn't know if we were already budgeting for this. You know, from the beginning of the last year. Or well, that's what. Huh? That's money coming in. That's so coming. so so we're expected to get twenty five thousand in. <laughs> So we put, a, we put together a plan, and the plan uh, assumed that we would start uh, the passport services on July 1st. Mm -hmm. And from July 1st until June 30th yeah. of uh, 2018, that we would have a 1,000 applications uh, process. Okay. At $25 per application, that's $25,000. Okay. So we didn't actually start uh, the passport service until uh, mid-January. Right. And, uh, and the reason that we started in mid-January is because of the uh, the State Department approval mechanism ran right. reasonably slow. Yeah. That it took an extra six months before yeah. we were approved to go ahead. Yeah. At this point, we're at about 320 applications as of today. Mm -hmm. And that's over approximately two months of uh, doing the application. So I think... You know, it's been pretty well received at this point. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and, I see people are coming in. And I would, I would expect for us to be at about a thousand applications yeah. after we've done it for twelve months. Right. But certainly not by the end of the fiscal year, which is June thirtieth. Right. So, yeah, so I'm sorry, what? Dennis. Can I say, you know, that you know, at, at budget time. That twenty-five thousand was basically just a placeholder, right? Since we really yeah, no, it was it was kind of a swag. I understand yeah. that. I, I'm just trying to understand, you know, you know uh, what is expected to come in, maybe what department it's being charged against, because I, you know, I don't know where task force falls in, in in the way of departments or areas. So you know, and you know, again, it, I mean, people are are, are staffing that, so they, those folks come from a specific area and or department. 
and I would expect that you know it's a it's you know when I do a project or a program, I say here's my program, and we'll call it uh, passports in this case. It's going to take three people or four people, and the cost of those people is is this amount, and then and then yeah, I list that amount, and then. You know, I know I'm going to get 25,000 in, but I didn't know what area of task force was supposed to fall in. And that's what we've been trying to figure out so that we can kind of understand, you know, what departments do these, these different programs fall in? Because, I, I, you know, how do we know we get the right number of people? So the passports are staffed out of the patron services area of the library. services. And uh, passports, uh, passport applications are taken on a reactive basis not proactive. So right. um, we don't have a model where we've staffed that area of the library and have somebody sitting there waiting for a passport applicant to come up to them and ask for a passport application. Right. Instead, when somebody comes into the library, just like if they come into the library and ask uh, at this point if uh, they can get a document notarized, <coughs> we find a notary in, right. in the library, and very often it's in uh, pa uh, patron services. And we ask that person to perform that service. Yeah. We don't, just like passports, have somebody sitting at a notary desk. Yeah, I would expect so you to. These are, uh, these are all services that are reactive mm -hmm. and have not caused us to uh, do any, uh, to increase our staffing at any level for any purpose. Yeah, so no, it just helps me better understand that. You know, uh, all of this was laid out in the proposal that was uh, accepted by yeah, the board. Yeah, you know, I'm getting old, but I need, I need a refresher. I need a refresher. I'm old guy. All that stuff is on the uh, on the website. Yeah, yeah. Under under the FOIA and transparency yeah. tab. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I I get I get the fact that there's some information I don't know what's out there, but I'll I'll, I'll look at it. I thought it was interesting to to understand that it's it's. It's coming. People are coming from the patron services area, and I guess I would assume that maybe your your notary or, or whatever is coming from that, that area too. We have notaries uh, throughout the library. Yeah. There are a lot in patron services. Yeah. There are some in adult services. Um, Diane is a uh, is a notary. Diane Woodburn is a. Uh, uh, we have uh, a notary in tech services. That sometimes uh, provides or uh, you know provides that service, and I'm not sure where else. But you okay. know, we have we have quite a few throughout yeah. the library. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Any other questions on the treasurer's report? Nice job, by the way. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Okay. I will now entertain a motion to approve the payment of bills. Thanks, uh, Greg. Sorry. Sorry. To approve the payment of bills for operating expenses of one hundred ninety thousand two hundred fifty-seven dollars and forty-five cents. Payroll expenses of two hundred eighty-six thousand two hundred three dollars and eighty cents, and a special reserve and special reserve expenses of zero dollars for a total monthly expense of four hundred seventy-six thousand four hundred sixty-one dollars and twenty-five cents. Do I have such a motion? Motion. Second. Right. Any discussion? Then I'll take a roll call. Uh, Karen. Yes. Carolyn. No. Dennis. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to abstain here. Abstain? Was, was that an abstain? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Ted? Yes. Okay. Let's move on to the director's report. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I don't have very much to talk about. It's all in the report itself. The last meeting was not that long ago. And you all were at the... Um, uh, party here to kick off the baseball exhibit. The one thing I did want to call to your attention is page 26 of the top is the CCS migration timeline. And because I, I just wanted you to be aware of that because it's possible that people would ask you about it. They might say, oh, I'm getting frustrated with the library's catalog, it's not working. And that will help you on to, to be able to understand that there are going to be times when part of the catalog or the systems are down. So there, are, there will be a short period where people are not able to place holds, things like that. So, so is, is, is there a specific uh, outage or blackout when you're doing changes, or there is? It's it's spelled out here. So, so, yeah. but it, so it's it's during typical patron usage, or is it after hours? Because um, you would. Think the, they have to. It, it's the whole consortium is being taken down at once. Okay. The, there will the load. It will be loaded over a few days. Okay. So, uh, it will. 
Part of it will go down on April 8th when they start migrating the data, right. the, the, the book data and all of that information, and when the patron database gets migrated on beginning at 9 o'clock on Friday, April 13th, so after hours. So Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, they will be working on that, and that's when will be what they call offline, and the transactions will be being collected, but people won't be able to... to Place holds or things like that. The so Sasha's probably all over communicating that on huh? Yeah, we're working on that in multiple ways. And then we go live on Tuesday, April 17th. Uh, what? Uh, Good. Susan, on that, I'm sorry, Dennis. Yeah. Yeah. On that particular one. Um, so if people have items that are overdue or come due during those couple of days, they can still return them and they'll be going on to parts and they'll be all getting. Uh, I gotcha. Put in there, and we also will not be having things due during that period. Okay. So people actually will have a little bit longer to check things out. So that's really all I have. If you have any questions for me, okay. I'm happy to answer them. I have one question. Um, uh, we're required to file a statement of economic interest, but I have not received a link from the county clerk's office yet. Um, so I don't know if perhaps they're delayed. Yeah. I presume our names were submitted to the county They were, yeah, back in February. So, um, when I went else back, has received it, yeah. have you? No, I haven't. I got mine last year on March 20th. I went back and looked. So oh. really, I think it's oh, okay. You know what okay. I wanted to mention about that? Um, the village, um, their secretary, I think is who she is, sends us an email with the link, and that's how we file. So we get it you, from you the will, village. You will, true well, village, but we're not getting it from you. We're waiting. No, for it's the, it's Cook County. County. You did it? I can't do it. They can solve that. done by Cook County. It's a different setup, I guess, for a village and a library. That's really? Okay. All right. I just thought I'd mention it. Okay. Yeah, no, if I could, I would. I, I don't have that power. You don't have the access? <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Anything on monthly statistics? Uh, well, actually, I've got a couple of comments on that report. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. Um, on page 21, uh, really big kudos for the team that out there. Um, for how, you know, how it's in, right? It's, we've got all these businesses that I see with all these top 100 signs everywhere, and it's great to pull them all together in one place. And the um, it's wonderful. And anybody who was a team who, you know, searched for jobs in the summer, really appreciate that. Um, on the next page 22, uh, the Axis 360 circular, I'm sorry, what's the Axis 360? It's one of our ebook collections. It's uh, one that we ordered from Rails. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's a slightly different model from Overdrive in uh, that they, um, since it's centrally purchased, they keep track of all of the holds and they keep purchasing to meet the hold demand. Uh, Where with or Overdrive, we have to do more of that ourselves. So a great big thanks to Kathleen for right. reducing. Right. Yeah, she is a sharp cookie. Right. And, um, yeah. yeah. When you're finished. Oh, sure. Uh, I think that yeah, was, uh, yeah, the 3,000, I have page 24 that, uh, Superdog donated the gift cards and 3,000 dollars, which is, yeah, really outstanding. Um, and, and that whole, uh, Cubs versus Sox, I, I, I don't know about our, all the other trustees, but I really enjoyed myself. Uh, I thought it was a great community. Business. Great business uh, time, you know, it's wonderful. Uh -huh. So a lot of, lot of kudos to Sasha about that. And I did hear the WT in the radio. Oh, okay. I was thinking the radio in the background all of a sudden. Hey. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I heard that the Bugle had a great picture on the cover. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and they have to find the Bugle. So. Yes, it did. Yeah, it did. I didn't see the that. Bugle. Yes. Did you have something else? Yeah, to say? sorry, I'm done. Thanks. Yeah. <coughs> I just wanted to, to, to comment on, on the overdrive. I'm a big, big uh, fan of overdrive, as well as uh, Flipster, both electronic type uh, uh, access. And, uh, I was on there this morning, uh, not on the over, overdrive, but last night for overdrive. And then this morning I was looking at the magazines. Uh, and there was a new magazine I saw called Sim Simple, and it was kind of interesting. I saw some interesting things. I'm a big fan of all the electronic stuff, easy access, and uh, I can get it at any time I want. Great. So we'll I'll, I'll have to check out that access, though. On that topic, will the new catalog change access to the electronic databases or have any effect on it? Well, let's see if we can hold that. 
It won't change. No. Um, that. I, hopefully, we'll have a few more links into the catalog so it'll make it easier ah. for you to find the e materials. Oh, okay. I'm all about easy. Yeah. Huh? I'm, I'm all about, about easy. easy. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. It's pretty magazine simple. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was an interesting yeah. magazine. I, I, I hadn't seen it out there, so I checked it out. It's not a surprise. All right. Um, communications? Can I, can I ask a question? Are we at trustee calendar yet or not? Yeah, that's part of the district report. Yeah. Can I ask a question sure. now? I know it's May 18th, Lacone Trustee Banquet, the Carlton of Park, Oak Park Hotel. Yeah. What is that about? What is that? The, uh, the Lacone is a, a group of the library administrators and there are different uh, groups for the different, there's like a marketing group and a technology group. The administrators group hosts a trustee banquet every year. Um, Karen Diamond and Linda Ryan and I went to it last year or the year before. It's, so we can attend this. You can attend that. It is there's a cost. And I think it's it's not cheap, but um, but it is a great opportunity to meet other trustees and then there's always a speaker. So. Okay, and it's it's oh May 18th. When would you need to know? Um, I think they like to know at least two weeks before. So if you can so make early May. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. Do we know what day of the week it is? Is there, is there, is there, a, can we just, do we key in anything particular to find out information cost wise or anything like that? Um, I can just send you a link to the flyer. How about that? Okay. Yeah, 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 already, yeah. so just, you know, I could also look on me. Or should I just wait? It's I'll not just a lot of this website. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah, just wait a lot of Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, speaking of the calendar, I noticed that the Night of the Roses is coming up again. I'm not supposed to have any honorees this year, do we? Yeah. It, it's not going to be us again. It's not going to be us again. Yeah. 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 You know, it was great last year. Yeah. Yeah. Susie actually knows who they are because she's on the board now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. Good and are you announcing them? or? No. 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 Well, well, I don't know if they're going to officially announce them. I think the people know, but they have not been announced. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. okay. Um, all right. Anything else on the director's report? Um, any uh, comments on communications? Nope. There's in reports from the library. From the library, no. Mm -hmm. uh, there weren't enough officers to so hold the meeting. Okay. Uh, legislative rails. No. Okay. All right. Secretary's report. Uh, we have a secretary's report tonight. Dan, um, would you like to read it into the record? Mm -hmm. Okay. Certified copies of the report of receipts and expenditures for the Niles Main District Library for the six months ending December 31st, 2016. The 12 months ending June 30th, 2017 and the six months ending December 31st, 2017 were filed with the Cook County Clerk on February 22nd, 2018. Second report. A certified copy of the report of the statement of operations for the Niles Main District Library for the 12 months ending June 30th, 2017, will be filed with Cook County Clerk upon receipt of the certificate of publication. The statement of operations was published in the Niles Herald Spectator on March 8, 2018. Can I ask a question? Um, why is it stuff is only being done? For the 2016 now, is it because the, they didn't have all the information necessary to submit it, or what? No, really. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah, we had, yeah, we had turnover in the department, and uh, okay. the woman that normally does it, you know, didn't, uh, wasn't here to do it. Okay. Uh, so uh, we caught up all at once, and now it's on the screen. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, I don't think there's any comments on that. Uh, so we move on to number 10, new business. Uh, discussion of the possible motion on the requirements of state statute regarding hiring library personnel uh, under 75 LCS 16 slash 30. I uh, would like to motion to. Oh. That is your motion. Approve the report of the state compensation and removal of employees, which is in violation of the Illinois Compiled Statute 75 ILCS 16 slash 30 dash 55.35. Second. 
All right. Um, is there, a, uh, by the way, I did not put the agenda item on in exactly that fashion because there may be multiple motions regarding this issue, I presume. And also, I will not list a motion that has a conclusion in its title. That in fact, a practice that has been taken on is illegal. Uh, so I've not listed it in that fashion. But as you see, we do have it on our agenda tonight um, to hold a discussion with a possible motion under 75 ILCS 16-30. So we do have a motion on the table. Uh, any discussion? My one question is, don't we normally go to closed session and approve, not all, although I admit that you've been, part timers have been hired, we've been told that so many part timers are going to be needed and then they're just hired. Right? And we approve, yes, we'll accept this many part timers for a certain position, but right. of course, the, we have in the past. Yeah. Not since Susan's been prior. We don't approve any employee. Um, I think what, what has happened is since the meeting of December 15th, we followed this process. Now, with certain, uh, well, I'll let Susan speak as to uh, the practice since she's been here. Right. Um, prior to December 15th, the previous board president had already told us don't put the clerks and pages on the agenda. He didn't want the board to bother approving them. So Who, that was on the sorry. Morgan Dubiel, when he was president, instructed the staff not to do clerks and pages. So that part of it was already being handled in that way. Um, I did a poll of the library directors and found out what the practice was in the other libraries. I got 40 responses, which I distributed in December at that meeting, and it found that this was the practice at all of those libraries, that the boards um, approved the salary line and they would approve salary schedules so that the board had control over the overall spending but that it was up to the director to manage and then at this December 15th meeting our attorney Dennis Walsh came and he as you can see on page 33 um, gave the board his legal opinion and he is our attorney and he gave us his legal opinion so it's the board wrong. voted it's accordingly well you, you, you're not a lawyer and he is so oh. with this <laughs> I like it I'm glad we got the take going because this is fun. I'm enjoying this. It, it, you know, you're, you're in violation of a statute that clearly states All right, the Dennis, objective. Dennis, I, I don't think this is a, a way to properly discuss matters with our staff. What? I think the majority of the board believes that we are acting properly and not, not in violation of any statute. And, and we passed it, let me we, finish please. Yeah, yeah. We passed this uh, over two years ago. We passed it uh, with everyone uh, coming to the conclusion that it was proper for us to give the pre-approval to our director to hire employees. And we decided that was proper and we decided it was correct under state statute. We also conferred with our legal counsel at that time to verify that we were acting properly under state statute. And we were told that we were. Yeah, Furthermore, it's in conformance with what other districts are doing too. Could, could, could. I'll wait your Can I just ask no, a question? No, I, I have a question before she does. And we, All right, and I will say with respect to this, what we're going to do during this discussion is everyone will have a chance to speak, and everyone will have a chance to speak twice. Mm -hmm. But no one gets to speak twice yeah. before everyone gets a chance to say something. Yeah. So I will go around the table and give every person a chance to speak, but we are not going to go on endlessly about this. All right, so Dennis, we have you, to. you want to take one of your two turns. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, if, if I have it understood correctly, Carolyn Derblick and myself, Dennis Martin, firmly believe what the statute states is in is totally incorrect for, from what we've been doing here, and that all of the other current trustees, the current director, the business manager, and anybody else at this table believes that the library director has the right to approve. We didn't say this. We gave our pre-approval. We delegated our authority who, who, who to the director. The, -approval? the board did. The board delegated its authority. Was, it, was that before my term here? That was in December yeah. of 2015. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and oh, I'll wait until my turn. Yeah. So, 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 uh, how, how can you how can you delegate your approval in the statute? And I, I understand we, we have a lawyer that uh, has has given his opinion. Uh, I, it would be interesting 
to see uh, if he still feels that way. Uh, knowing what we have all read, uh, I, I just uh, I, I just want to know: Does everybody here now still agree with the delegation to uh, our current uh, director? So we can certainly adjust that uh, through the motion that you've made. No, I, I did not make the motion. I'm sorry, you seconded the motion. Right? I seconded the motion. Okay. So yeah, I would I would like to see who here at the table is still in, in agreement. Okay. With the right. delegation right. of authority. Right. Um, all right. Uh, who would like to speak next? Dan? Can Can we just back up just a little bit since I'm a new board mm -hmm. member? Mm -hmm. We have hired a number of staff members since I've been. And you have hired them and have set their compensation. And has it never been brought to the board for um, consideration or for approval, final approval? No, the board has delegated that approval okay. to me. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's what I understand from reading this. And I also understand, excuse me, from reading uh, the yeah. actual statement. The board may appoint and fix the compensation of a qualified librarian to act as the administrator. She may hire other employees deemed necessary by the administrator, subject to the approval of the board. So what I think this is saying is that, yes, she has the approval to do this because the board apparently in 2015 gave her that authority. So if we want to take another vote on it, then that would be something that you'd have to uh, suggest. Well, that's something that's yeah. before yeah. us right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, were you finished, Diane? Um, yes. Okay. Patty, did, did, did you want to say something or not? I wasn't really sure. I was just going to. Um, my understanding is yeah, I remember when this happened. I remember uh, the lawyer who specializes in library law giving his opinion. But I also remember, and this is where I misstated what I meant, is that during budget time, we give a, so much money that we allot for new hires and part-timers or whatever. Usually at that point, where it's asked, can we hire X, Y, Z, and we give approval or don't give approval. Am I correct in that assumption? Well, I would certainly tell you, I would give you the salary breakdown as it is in the budget, so, you know, that we're, yeah. we would need this much for labor rights. And, and if the money, if that was changing, I would be telling you. Oh, and, of course, in the narrative, if I had plans to do, let's say we had had a thousand people storming the doors for passports, mm -hmm. and we decided we really are going to need to hire somebody, I would be putting that in the plan for the coming year, and I would be informing the board that I'm going to need to budget more, I'm going to need more to the salary yeah, line for that. We would hear about that during the budget you process. Would. I, I would. I'm not, like, adding any positions to the library that uh, increase over our the salary line. Okay, that's the way I, I remembered it, is that we've discussed it. And when we had a closed session, it was mostly pertaining to disciplinary or, or letting somebody go. Right. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, thank you. Um, did you wish to speak? Yeah. Um, the, the discussion uh, of this issue seems to revolve around uh, the section 30-55-10, which uh, various trustees keep quoting. But um, um, as Diane pointed out, section 30-55-35 clearly states, clearly states, I don't, even, I don't need to be a lawyer to read this. The board may appoint and fix compensation of qualified library. Uh, administrator may hire other employees. I, I don't understand why you're not quoting this one. Uh, in the argument. So it, it's, we are clearly within our legal bounds to do so. I, I don't know. It's black and white. So oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Carolyn, other than making a motion, I don't think you actually spoke. Did you want to speak at it? Um, speak about yes. it? Um, I'd like to speak to Olson and Spadoni's explanation of the actual um, statutes. 
and um, let's find I have some. Okay. So we're we're always reading the first sentence, but we're we're dropping the remainder. It says the board may appoint and fix the compensation of a qualified librarian to act as an administrator of the district's daily operations. So that means we hire Susan and we expect her to perform certain tasks. There's a second component. The administrator, who is Susan, may hire employees, deem necessary, fix their compensation, and remove those employees, subject to the approval of the board. So we are supposed to go into executive session and discuss all of what she's doing like we used to do before you became the director. And it says right here in this statute that right, your hiring please, please. is Direct subject Carolyn. to our approval. Carolyn, which I just want to point would out. Would you please direct your comments to me rather than to individual staff members? If you have comments, oh, um, not a problem. I'm not... glad we look at you. Okay. All right. And then the other point I'm trying to make is that you're all saying that we decided we can give this authority to Susan. But you can't. According to the statutes, you're not allowed to do that. And that is also clearly stated in a couple of places. Um, there's one section here. Let me just get the exact sentence. 30-55, um, it's all under 75, ICLS 16. Powers of the trustees, the board of trustees of a district, shall carry out the spirit and intent of this act in establishing, supporting, and maintaining a public library. It goes on to say, in addition and without limiting other powers conferred by this act, the board shall have the power set forth in the following sections. Then it reminds us again, ordinances, regulations, and resolutions the board may enact, amend, and rescind ordinances and make and adopt regulations and resolutions for their own guidance and for the government of the library that are expedient and not inconsistent with this act. Which means we cannot give her our authority because the act clearly states we are in authority. So that's the point I'm trying to make. Okay, uh, all right, I'd like to respond myself to a few things that have been said. Uh, regarding our ability to delegate. And I'd like to, for example, by analogy, look at um, 75 LCS 16 slash 30 dash 55.10, which mm -hmm. is also in our uh, materials, expenditures of money. That section says the board shall have ex the exclusive control of the expenditure of all monies collected for the library and deposited to the credit of the appropriate funds. Reading that literally in the same way that you would read the section at issue, that means that only we could handle money. No one else in the library could take any money at the desk. It would always have to be the seven trustees. We'd have to sit there every day, taking in the money, handling the money, and we personally, we personally, would have to write every check and pay every bill because it says the expenditure of money is under the exclusive control of the board. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to read the statute in such a fashion so as to prohibit the delegation of any activity, you would have to read 55-10 in that fashion, meaning that no one else in the library could ever touch money. It would have to be the boards uh, only that would be doing that. Similarly, if you're going to take the position that the library cannot delegate the authority to hire, you would also have to look at 5515, which says supervision of the facilities. The board shall have the exclusive control of the construction of the library building. That means that we individually would have to be out there with our hammers no. constructing the library. No. Yes, we would. Yes, we oh, would. Because fine. you are making that argument. You are arguing that the board cannot delegate any of the powers or authorities given to it in this code. We personally would have to be out there with our hammers and our nails building this library because the statute says the board shall have the exclusive control of the construction of any library building. So I think we can all come to the conclusion that is not really a sensible it? interpretation of 55-15 or a sensible interpretation of 55-10. And I suggest it's also not a sensible interpretation of 55-35 to state that the board cannot delegate its authority to the director to approve 
the hiring of every employee. I also suggest that it's really not practical to have the board approve every hiring, and that's why we didn't do it in the past. That's why we uh, decided that wasn't going to make sense, because we only meet once a month. And what happens, among other problems, is the director or her delegates will interview people who come for a job shortly after a board meeting, and then she says, and, and we can't make you a job offer for a month because you have to be approved by the board. So that means every high school student who wanders up and wants a job shelving books during the summertime, if they, let's say they come after the main meeting, Susan has to tell them, too bad, I can't hire you because I have to get the approval of the board, which means those students wander away and get a job someplace else, and which also means every other type of employee that we hire is likely to take a job someplace else because they cannot get a firm job offer. And that was very much a problem in the past. And I, I note that even uh, when Morgan Dubial uh, wanted uh, the board to approve certain positions, even he never took the position that the board had to approve all positions because we all realized that it just was an unworkable situation that we really couldn't make people wait a month to give them a job offer. Finally, another reason it was impractical is what, what are we going to do? Are all seven LFs going to interview every high school student who comes in for a job? What are we going to do? Are we all going to go over their transcripts to see what their classes were that they took in high school? It just really is not a good use of the board's time for us to try, and I say try, to evaluate the credentials of every candidate who applies for a job. That is something that is properly delegated to our staff who is better able to evaluate those credentials and uh, who actually has the time to do it, whereas we do not have the time to go over every single person who's hired by the library. And that, again, is another reason why in December of 2015, uh, we delegated our authority to approve hiring uh, to our director. So, all right, everyone has a chance to speak once. If everyone wants one more chance to speak, they may do so. Uh, let me just step for a minute and acknowledge that another uh, trustee has come uh, joined us t uh, right now. Um, Linda, we are on number 10 of the agenda, if you would like to look at it. And um, I've already announced that each trustee can speak twice on this matter. Everyone who is in attendance has spoken once so far. Uh, because you just came in, I'm just going to let you get settled for a minute, and we'll go on, and anyone who would like to speak again regarding it may do so now. Would anyone? Yes, Diane. Um, it has been my experience that um, hiring in the educational system, the administrators hire the staff and then as needed, and then um, when a school board meets on a monthly basis, they are notified of the new hiring. Is she addressing Carolyn, or is she supposed to be talking to you? Oh, she, talk to me, please. Yes, okay. I'm ask and, all board members they, to talk to me. Um, look at the new hirings and approve it, and that's mm -hmm. a final a formality. That's all it is. Okay. All right. So, I mean, that's possible for Susan to do the same thing. Give us the list of names, put it in the report, the list of names, new hires, and we formally hire them. Okay, someone else like to speak? Um, are, you, are you done? I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Anyone else? Did, did, does Linda want to come? Probably number 10A. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Did you want to hear the proposal? <coughs> oh, yes. Would you read the motion, please? No, oh, I don't get the whole motion. Do you want me to read it again? It's too fast. Okay, so it's not discussion? It is. It is. It is so but I mean, I just have that yeah, that it's a reversal. Yeah, written it down yet. Oh, okay. So the motion I need was, I move to approve the reversal of the current personnel approval procedure by Director Susan Lemke for hiring employees, fix their compensation, and removal of employees, which is in violation of the Illinois Compiled statute 75 ILCS 16 slash 30 55 35. Okay. 
And that's a lot just talking it, so if you've got questions. <laughs> I guess the first thing I have to say, um, I would agree that we were ever in violation, so I guess I have a question of are we in violation? Uh, well, that is the way Carolyn has couched her motion. Um, so I, don't, I personally don't want to read the motions right um, Well, I agree, and that's why I did not list it in that fashion on okay. the uh, agenda, so um, because it, it, it is of a conclusory nature. Um, but uh, if you wish to make other comments on it, you may do so. Um, I just know that, uh, just thinking back, the reason why we, one of the reasons why we have done it is um, there's a gap of time, and if she needed to hire someone, then that's waiting a whole two weeks, three weeks, one week longer than needed be to wait for the board approval, and then I think that there's still a time, right? They, they can start the next day. Right now, no, they would have to have then go the, through fingerprinting or whatever. Well, I don't know what else. We would, they would then be nobody would be. Well, I I, I would say part of if you do my my answer. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, one thing is it it was not done in the past in executive session. The names of the people were on the board packet, right. so conceivably somebody could be a board could decide no, you can't hire this librarian, and then they. You know their name is out there that they have applied for this job, and so then the alternative to that is um, that they have already told their people that they're that they are leaving the job, and now they didn't get the job that they had been told that they were going to get. So I think it complicates things considerably to have this gap in there. But moreover, I mean, it could just be a formality. But um, your example of hiring somebody with a swastika on their head. If I am hiring somebody with a swastika on their head, your problem is you have a library director with bad judgment. Your employee is me. My employees are who I take care of. And if I'm hiring badly, then you have a problem with me. So that's all I have to say about that. Go ahead. Were you, were you I just wanted to say that my, I think it was one of us in one of those books in the brown or that green book. And it wasn't illegal to have the director, it was that we had to give board approval to let you be able to, I'm just saying, I believe it's in one of those books, that yeah. it was that, it was only with our approval that she can mm -hmm. go ahead. In other words, we can delegate our exactly. authority to approve And that's to what her. we did by giving her that, so it wasn't going to get any statute, or I'm not sure how it's written because it was stated that as long as we gave her approval, mm -hmm. and then she then puts it in her director's report, then we were, according to, I can't remember which book it was, but that's my memory. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, thank would you. anyone else, uh, would anyone like to speak a second time? I would like to, yes. Um, yes. a couple of things. I'd like to address your explanation of 10 and 15, um, I quickly jotted down that um, you wrote, we have exclusive control um, of the expenditures of all monies. And you're saying that would mean that we handle all of the processes. That's not what it's saying. It is saying we have exclusive control. It doesn't say that you have to write the checks and I have to type invoices. So you're kind of mixing words here. I'm taking a statute that says specifically Susan needs to bring her personnel recommendations to us for approval. That's completely different than trying to assume that an ordinance means something. If it says we are to approve her personnel um, hirings and pay changes, that's exactly what we should be doing. So I, I, I don't agree with the way you're kind of mixing words here because we are in violation of that specific clause. That's why I call it a violation. And Linda, I would love to know what you're referring to. You know what, if you could just hand me the two books and I'll find it. Oh, so it's in that. Okay, right. so it's not the Illinois statute, which, which is different. Aren't those books based on the Illinois statute? No, that's the Library Association. Who prints but those? I'm yeah. So I'm we sure cannot violate state they, they are Illinois, though. No, they're not the state of Illinois. Well, the That's one, the library association. All right, all right. Am I still talking? Uh, okay. Thanks. But, uh, I'm sorry. And then I wanted to address one other comment. 
Okay, Susan mentioned um, something about the name of the employees on the agenda and then they don't get the job and everybody knows. I believe we discussed that and decided not to put names on an agenda and it's just personal matters and we go into executive session. No, so you, that, that would not be legal. Okay, no, I don't know that all the names need to be listed, but back to your dilemma of trying to hire people and having a monthly board meeting being a problem, I don't understand why only this library has a problem with a process that is followed by high schools, middle schools, and so many other government agencies. You focus on your board meeting, you interview your people, you tell them they're interested, you're interested, and you also tell them they cannot be approved until the board meeting. Everybody you know, follows this process. Actually, that's not true. Oh, I know it's true, because I've been part of it. Well, okay. it's, it's not true everywhere. All right, so Carolyn, um, I think this would be your second time, Patty? Yes. Okay. As far as what the statement about everybody, I know for a fact with the high school I work for, the district, teachers and people of that level, certified people are hired that way. People who are not certified are not hired that way. It's not true. Okay. It's not true. I was told I had a job and I had it. And I was not approved by the board when I first got my job 18 years ago. All right, uh, Dennis, did you want to? Yeah, I, I just, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just interested in, in making sure that we're following mm -hmm. the correct process and the, the, the proper statutes and that everybody understands that the ALA is, is, is not the governing body. They, they are an organization. People have to understand that they're an organization. And, and, and they pass out information that is very pertinent to, to, to the libraries. But they don't they don't set the rules in Illinois. And, and I'm not I just want to make sure that that's understood. And that the listing of uh, new hires and people leaving, I think we talked about trying to put that in the agenda so that you know more of the public understands that there's gonna be a meeting, you know, talking about new hires. And, and that way it's not couched into the director's report and it becomes a little bit more transparent. Everybody realizes the comings and goings at the library. You know, because I, I think at the last meeting we talked a little bit about uh, that there was one person leaving, three new people were going to come in as part-timers. There's a lot of activity and I, I think the, the overall public that, that takes the time would be interested to understand it. And I think we, we said, yeah, it makes sense to, to make sure that those items are listed on the agenda rather than the director's report. I mean, we could always go back and clarify. But yeah, so so yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm I'm real interested again to see how, how people vote. Um, Jim, do you want to second? Uh, yeah. Uh, Jim, please. Trust uh, Dribble said that everybody does it. Um, the way that uh, she believes that they do. Uh, yet, um, Susan found that uh, 40 of her contacts in other libraries said that those libraries did not do it that way. So I, I don't believe that the everybody does it is correct. Um, Linda, you can get a second chance if you wish. Um, I would just have two points. Mm -hmm. um, as I as I know, um, we aren't going against state statute. However, um, as Dennis just said, I would like to get a check with the lawyer. Have we checked with you? you did. That's what oh, was on here. That's what he said last time. That's what the library lawyer. Right. Okay, during the discussion, Mr. Walsh, did you say it out loud so that mm -hmm. home? Okay, so it says, during the discussion, Mr. Walsh, our attorney, reviewed the Illinois statute and informed the trustees that it is legal for the board to delegate hiring authority to its director, but that it is up to the board to decide whether or not they want to. So either way, the board would be in compliance with the statute. So when that is directly, 
from from when we voted on this. So do we have a time frame? It's in there. So the I want it out loud. date is December 2015. December 15th, 2015. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. So, according to our lawyer, that's what I would say. I would actually table this right now and say, let's talk to our lawyer. That, that's, what I'm, that's what I would say. But right now, we've talked to our lawyer. This is what the lawyer has said. So, we are in compliance, according to our lawyer, with the statute. So, my vote is to keep it the same way because I trust... Susan and she brings us all the information. We have not had a problem in the two oh, I trust almost Susan three too. years. But we have not we have not had an issue in the next last three years. So what's the point of changing it is my that's okay. my opinion. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So I think I'm the only person who hasn't spoken twice and I will just say that uh, um, I think that we are acting in conformance with state statute. I think uh, what our, our attorney told us before that we could um, handle this either way. Either way would be acceptable. We could delegate the authority to uh, hire and to approve that hiring to our director or not. We Did chose. He say or not? Pardon? He said or not? He said either way. Okay. Either way. Okay. Either way is acceptable. Is what he said. Okay. And we chose in December of 2015 to delegate that authority to our director. And I think the reasons we chose to do that then are still valid now, the practical reasons which I enumerated earlier. Uh, Dennis, I would agree that I do want to know who's coming and going. Um, I, I just think it's very, uh, you know, it's something that I like to know. Do we have new employees? How many new employees do we have? Are they full-time? Are they part-time? I also like to Does this go out? Does this go out? That you know, same process goes out in the papers. Yeah, the Illinois procurement. Okay. What paper does it go in? Uh, it's our, it's our option. We decide. So, what do you normally do? Local, Tribune, yeah, local. The So it only goes around here, so we don't reach. No, I believe it. Uh, it hits all the areas right around the the northwest side. So how did we end up with Oak Brook Mechanical? It was the original contractor 20 years ago. So we didn't reach out that far. So we just stay local. Is that what we do? Do we not want to reach out and see? Is uh, Oak Brook Mechanical not uh, competitive? Yeah. It's just basically we'll, we'll reach out to the different larger contractors and, and let them know that we have a bid out there for them. So you reach out to people specifically? So what will happen source. is we'll, we'll post it in the paper, we'll post it on our website. Uh, similar to uh, the accounting RFP, we'll uh, find um, large contractors. Uh, I mean, you know, when you look at large contractors that deal um, in things of this scale, they're looking to put chillers on top of uh, Trump Tower or you know something with a little bit more of a profit margin and notoriety to it. Um, but what we'll do is uh, notify them that this bid is out there and if they would like to uh, uh, submit a bid on, uh, on their behalf, then, uh, then they should do that. We have in the past encouraged um, you to solicit bids from uh, local contractors yes. and that we uh, like to give our business, if possible, if it's competitively possible, to exactly. local uh, businesses who have and sometimes do support us too. So sure. we, uh, you know, we're going to take the lowest responsible bid, but we want to make sure local uh, contractors know about the opportunity yeah, sure. to bid. So sure. we'll that again, I presume. And then can I just ask one other question? You mentioned you have contractors out, so I guess someone's already looked at all that you need. Do you have ballpark figures on this already? Do you yeah. Kind of know what you're looking for? Or are we just? Yeah. Um, you know, we um, we estimate that the uh, chiller is probably somewhere between. Uh, Two and two fifty, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. The uh, uh, painting, um, I believe, was in the, somewhere between uh, sixty and seventy thousand. Um, and the clocking, I believe, was uh, about thirty, about thirty-five, about thirty-five thousand dollars. Can I just ask a question about the chiller? So two hundred fifty thousand is, you know. 
you know, everything is three mobile and what have you. Do we get anything like for the next five years out of whoever puts it in or it's all three? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, so warranty is what you're thinking? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, 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 well, and well, what does it, you know, I'm, but time and, time and material too, does that vary? Like, do you get a, uh, like, since you've had Oak Brook Mechanical, I'm only using their name because they've been around, but they do more for us than someone else, or it's pretty standard? It's whatever the manufacturer offers. Is that what it, all right then. There's, but there's, you have to, you have to keep it, uh, keep in mind that there's two parts of this. One is the piece of equipment itself. Right. And you have a warranty against manufacturing defects and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. the second part of this is the installation. So if they come out and they do uh, a poor installation job with leaky pipes and so forth, but they don't offer warranty on the, on the installation, then you're, you have a problem. So we'll be looking to be covered on the installation oh, okay. as well as mm -hmm. you know, the piece of equipment. Oh. So. Okay. All right. And if there are no further questions, we'll move on to our next item. Overview of Power Pack, the new patron uh, catalog. Are we going to get a little demonstration here? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good. Cindy Rademacher, my assistant director, to do that. She has been handling the CCS migration project, and she's the most familiar. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is um, just circulate an email, send an email to church, trustee confirming that they, they will work, and uh, we will right. tentatively meet on Wednesday, May second for the budget discussion. If that uh, is okay with you and Greg to who of course will be there. Okay? All right. All right. Um, Cindy, are you ready now? Oh, yeah. Can I just ask a question about this meeting? Are we um, expecting to discuss anything particular or receive particular information? How sure, opportunity to ask questions. Uh, well, I think we'll have a presentation on the April meeting, is that correct? Uh, right? You will uh, yes. probably have a PowerPoint as you have and we'll have budget, And we'll have budget materials. Budget materials, so there'll be a presentation, yes. which will take some time in and of itself. Yes. And uh, then the next uh, special meeting will be available for questions. Is, correct. Is that correct? Is that uh, acceptable to everyone? <coughs> so the special meeting is the March, the May. <coughs> no, 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 May. May. Second, right. May second. Thank is you. what okay. we're looking at at this point. Um, Sounds good. I'm going to ask uh, Susan again to confirm after everyone's look at their calendar if that is exactly going to work. Okay. 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 All right. So, Cindy, if you'd like to proceed now, we'd like to hear more about this. Okay. So I'm excited to share with you what the new public catalog is. Um, sort of going to look like it's not quite finished being built yet, but we can look at some of the features. Um, so this is the um, online uh, chapter one, and there's something here about the new catalog on page two in the spring edition, and it talks here about the features and some of the things that the patrons should expect during the migration, and it also um, points to a page that um, Sasha has put together on the website. So it's the nileslibrary.org slash new dash catalog. And this is going to continue to have new information about the migration. Um, you can see here on the right, there are going to be some drop-in sessions after the go-live date for patrons to get um, help get the questions answered and things like that. So it'll be downstairs um, in the commons and uh, in the lobby. So we'll have places for people to get their questions answered. There's also the new benefits, which we're going to look at in a little more in depth, but they are listed here. Um, and then some comments about what to expect, which is um, <coughs> excuse me, also summarized on your calendar sheet that um, Susan pointed out. But they're listed here for the patrons also. And some recommendations for the patrons. Like they should save their lists if they have lists in the current catalog. And if they Wait, want to keep I'm sorry to interrupt, but so what would be a, a specific list? Is it the, the books that I've checked out or read? You know, maybe I've, I've like, uh, I've read uh, 10 or 20 different books. Would, would that be a list that you're talking about? Wait, because it's nice to have. Yeah. I mean, if, yeah. if that's available, and I would have to say that that would be good to know uh, ahead of time. 
Yeah, so let me just log in here to my account. Um, so you can see here that I have some lists in my account. So a list here in Enterprise that we currently use and also in the new catalog are lists that patrons create themselves. So I have some lists here, and these are really important to me, my cat mystery. So if I want to save my list, I would need to go in here and either email it to myself or print it. And then can they import it back again? Or um, do they have to just be created? Yes, you have to Well, as long it. as they got a copy. Right. And yes. as long as I understand it, it's great. Yeah, so that would be the list that they need to got it. Uh, be sure that they save by April 14th. And then also the reading history. So if you have on your account your reading history turned on, then it's collecting your reading history. And if you want to save that, because it also will not migrate, there's a form here that you can fill out with your library card number, your password, and any email that you want it sent to. It. And then, if, just in a few minutes, you get a nice Excel document, it's very well formatted, and you can save your reading history. Would you do that once again? Just so you get that sure. Point. So yeah. this is on the okay. nileslibrary.org right. new catalog. Right. And so the steps to save your list is here. And then there's also the link here to the form. And so if you have not in the form. past saved your reading history, I suppose it's too late. Would that be right? Yes. You can get the next few weeks. You can get the next few weeks. You can get the next few weeks. But you can turn your history on now, and that preference will migrate. Okay. So when the new catalog is there, it'll already be collecting for you. Okay. Um, but you can always turn it on in the new catalog. Okay. So just click on the Get Reading History, and yeah, it will only click on this start link. collecting your history? Oh, well, I'll show you. Um, you can just ask at Patron Services now. They can turn it on for you. Or you can go um, into your account. I just saw where it says Get Reading History. On that sheet right here? Yeah. Yes. Well, that's going to get the reading history if your history is turned on. Okay, so... But if your history is not turned on, first you need to turn it on. Uh -huh. And if you want to save it in the new catalog, it'll be a rolling two year history. It won't be a lifetime of reading. Mm -hmm. It'll be a rolling two years. Um, then you can turn that on in the new catalog. And, and I'll show you where to do that. And then it talks a little bit here about the actual weekend of migration and um, some things to there. So you can always direct patrons here, or of course the library staff is always here to answer questions also. So let's take, uh, that's our form. Yeah. So this is actually the catalog, and this will be um, sort of built out by CCS. We have sent our uh, requests in, and they're gonna be doing that over the next month. So it's going to be changing. So as you come back, or as you see it on the 17th, it's gonna look different. And we're going to look at some of the features here. So this particular catalog will translate into eight other languages. Cool. Um, so this bottom one here is Arabic. And what translates are the navigations. The, the titles and um, book titles don't translate. But all the navigation tools do. All those pictures. So back to English. Can someone look at it to see that it's really correct? Um, well, Polish is misspelled. They're working on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I know sometimes when they do the translation, it doesn't really work well. I just wonder. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, it does make you sort of wonder, but they have to go all the way back to Polaris to get uh, Polish changed, and it's been taking a while. They haven't got it changed yet. But. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, one of our staff members pointed that out, so we were able to, mm -hmm. to pass that along. Uh, so, it's very easy. Oops, let me get back to English here. So right here we can um, go large text if we want it to be large, or we can go back to regular text. So that's a nice feature, very easy to find. The login is over here, um, and so you can log in, you can create a username, which some people prefer over remembering numbers. You, if you forget your password and you have email, you can have that uh, temporary password set to you. There's also here online registration. So if they want to register for their library card, um, they can do that here, and then that 
comes to the staff and it is mediated by the Patriot Services staff. So we're just going to do a search here and we're going to look for an item. I'd like to find a cat history. <laughs> We're going to look for a very popular, a very popular teen book. Okay, this um, series, very popular with teens. So on the results page, if you're used to Enterprise, it may look similar. These are facets. It's a little cleaner look than Enterprise, which has the include, exclude option. So this is a little cleaner. Some of the features that are here on this page. Um, if we go over here and look at more information, and we scroll down, get the call number, but you also have this feature that's called Map It. So when you get high school students that really have to have that book, they don't care how far they have to go to get it. <laughs> this will tell them where, where the library is and how far away it is um, yeah, that they cool. need to go and get that book. Nice. You can also get suggestions. Oops. Suggestions. This is tied into Goodreads and Novelist. And then uh, there would be reviews also down here. Not so much on teen books, but on other books. And then all the way down is also the librarian's view is the marked record. Okay, so there's also a place to place the hold. I can create my list here as I'm searching through the catalog. I can actually begin to build a list. And then there are links here to share it with social media. What are you sharing your list or sharing what? Sharing an item. If you just really want this item and you want to share it with your friends, you can post it. So we're going to go ahead and place a hole here on this item. Why did you just type that in? Like, I know mine. nothing. I don't know. Why. I, I know mine. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Okay, so then this screen, I can choose to pick this item up at another library. That is something that's new. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to be traveling or whatever, whatever I mean, um, I'm going to be staying out of town for several weeks and I'm anticipating something coming in soon, I could pick it up at a, at a member library. I can also here place a hold, but I'm going on vacation, so I really don't need this hold today. I. I'm going to be back until the 21st, so I'm going to submit this to, um, well, I already did it earlier, so it's not going to want me to do it again, but anyway, we'll go back here. So and it's nice, because sometimes you request a lot of things, and they all come in at the yeah. same time. Yeah, which so is like really nice. Yeah. You manage yeah. your whole list a little bit that way. So if I click on my name there, it comes to my account, and I can get a summary here of my account. So I have an item to be picked up. I have a message. I have two overdue items. So let's take a look at this item to be picked up. And it tells me here, very easily, ready to be picked up. I have some other holds that have different statuses here. Um, all of these columns are, are sortable, so if I want to change the order of things, I can just click on that title and, and do that. Um, I have a message. Let's take a look at that. Um, oh, it says here that, oops, sorry, we found a personal item in a recently returned book, so please call the library. Mm -hmm. People leave lovely things, all kinds of things in the book, so it's a little message I have for myself here. Um, contacts and preferences, you can update your um, phone, update the preference, how you want to get your notices. And here is where you would turn your history on, maintain reading history, it's right here. Maintain reading history. So you could turn that on there. I have an associated patron. I have my husband on my account so that he's authorized to pick up my holds. Oh, it's a good room to run. Yeah. 
bed bugs that people can't get home from work in no, time. Yeah, 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 it's it's really sense. Nice. And then here I can also change my log, my log on and also create um, a username on that field as well. Oh. So have my checked out items. Oops, I have two items overdue. Oh. Okay, so <coughs> Join the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> So, but I'm not going to be able to get into the library right away, so I'd like to know how much I'm going to owe. So let's see, I'm not going to be able to get into the library until Sunday. So by Sunday, oh. I need to have $4.65 oh, to, yes. to bring with me. So that's sort of in front of each other. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you still pay online? Yes, you will be able to pay online. Mm -hmm. um, so I can renew these items. Um, if there's no checkbox, it's because there's, it's not able to be renewed. But I can renew them here, and I can renew them all at one time. It's actually easier to renew all of the items. Um, you just check the box up top? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have holds. Holds, we already looked at that. Fines and fees, my reading history, and I have two saved searches. So a saved search is nice because if I want to know about a new James Patterson book that's coming out, I can actually save this search, and every week, because I know he writes a lot, every week I'm going to get an email of these search results. And so when the new book comes out, I'm going to be able to know right away and go ahead and place those holds. So that's a nice feature. Is there like a frequently asked question thing here? Um, there will be. We're building that out now in our Ask a Librarian so that there will be. There's a help tab here, which Polaris Help is very easy to read, it's very user friendly. And so the fourth choice in this list will be Ask Us, that it will link to our Ask the Library, which is an internal email that goes around to the staff and people pick it up and answer those questions. <coughs> so that's a quick look at our catalog. Can I ask a question? Oh, this is something that I always wondered about with the current system, I'm not sure how it's going to work with this. If I was looking for a book, sometimes it'll return six books, like at different libraries. And I just want one copy of the book. I don't really care which one it is. Mm -hmm. So I click on one and I say reserve that one. But then I really would be happy to get either any one of those six. I just want to get the one I can get the, the fastest. <laughs> right, I don't care yeah. if it's the big print or the small print yeah, or yeah. whatever. Um, is there a way to say, send me the first one that comes in, or first one available? Let's say it's a popular book. Yes. Yeah, I want it, and I, I don't care if it comes from Evanston or Lincolnwood or wherever. I don't know. Is that a possibility? Um, well, when you place the hold on the item, you're going to get the first available of that item. Um, and you're going to get that particular format, though. Right? Right. right. So if you need to just call the staff or email the staff, and we can place a hold on different formats and group those holds together so that you will get the first available of any of those and the rest will be canceled. We can do that now, mm -hmm. but it doesn't automatically cancel all the other ones so that you might end up getting Five. it in two formats, <laughs> right, before you like, oh yeah, i got to cancel those other holds. Why don't but, I have staff? I just wanted to know, like, can I do this online? Well, I'll, I'll look into that. Okay. See. I'm not, right. I, I have not yet seen that on the patron side, but okay. I'll look for it. It would be a great feature. Um, and so I do have, this is, uh, was made uh, by CCS, and Sasha is working to adapt it a little bit, but it does talk about, it sort of summarizes some of the new features of the catalog. Um, Can I ask a question? Yes. Thank you. Um, does this tie into our, um, uh, our, our, um, our calendar, anything we reserve, or anything we signed up for? The as programs? far as the programs? It will. After a little bit down the road, um, after Go Live, there are some additional features that will be added. And one of those is um, you can actually sort of do some promotional items in the catalog. Um, so if you're searching for something, it will say, you might also enjoy this program. So that will be something. won't start off that way day one, but it's something that will be developed down the road. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. so, Cindy, does this page show anything about ebooks or overdrive or what you checked out? Yes, your overdrive, your digital e uh, items will show up in your account here. 
So there are, in the test server, there is, are no um, digital items yet. Hopefully, with the new, there's a new version coming out in a few days, 6.0, mm -hmm. and they will have worked out some of the um, integration of the e-material. But at Go Live, it will show what you have checked out as the materials mm -hmm. in your account. I think I have another question if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. So you, pr you probably covered this. So when you mm -hmm. first started jumping in to your overview, um, is there something that, you know, I have a tendency, because I use the library a certain way, that I just jump into certain things. I'm wondering, is there a way to overlook the fact that this new catalog is coming out and there's a new process? Or is there something that just pops up right away that says, hey, by the way, you're going to have to do this and this. And like I said, you may have already talked about it, and maybe I just missed it. So, um, this so when you first current, start. Yeah, this like is that. the current catalog. Yeah. And from our website, you know, many people use this initial search box, and maybe you do too. Mm -hmm. It takes you right to a results page. Um, so CCS is actually going to be putting um, a banner on the catalog. Yeah, because like the, you have things popping up here or whatever. I just wondered, you know, sounds well, like Sasha you got a banner will, or something. Yeah, like Sasha that. will put some communication on the front page there as we get a little closer. Okay, um, cool. Yeah. And CCS is going to put something on the catalog that is going to let people know that a new catalog is coming cool. and you know some things that you need to do. So they're going to they're planning to do that on the current catalog. And again, you're saying this is coming out in about a, a, April 17th. another month, huh? Mm -hmm. And we're setting these up now? Well, yeah, we're going to put them, insert them into the books downstairs so patrons will be reminded about their um, reading history and getting those. That's like, a, that's like, a, a, template. It's like a template, yeah. Yeah, it's just a template. <coughs> I'm just wondering if, if for the new notification options, including text, Maybe because you just said like text, you could change the large and then, you know, think, I'm thinking maybe you could put including text messaging. Mm -hmm. Maybe you put, there's some space there. Okay. Yeah. Good just point. to clarify, mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't know. Well, no, that's, that's a good point because there's text messaging and then there's the large there's and text. regular text size. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. that way it's mm -hmm. super clear. Yeah, that's a good and idea. And you have the space. I don't want to say anything you've already painted the five thousand. No, 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 no. Okay. Cindy, just okay. a general question. Do you think everyone that uses this will be pleased in about two months? Should all the little kinks be worked out? Or, you know how patrons can get real impatient? Um, I do think that they will be pleased with it. The staff you know, has all gone through a training session, and the comments were, gee, it's really not that different, you know, mm -hmm. the facets on the side and you know, the search mode. So there's some extra features, but it's not radically different. Okay, great. And April 17th, everything's up and running. Is that what you're Well, in the morning of April 17th, we switched the, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we switched the link over. Um, to this catalog. I'll be thinking of you April 17th. <laughs> oh, I'll go on the library website and see. Okay, thanks. Yeah, and... Uh, Good. Wonderful. So over the weekend that we are offline, Susan mentioned that a little bit, but over that weekend, um, the catalog will be available, but it would be view only. And so then you will need to call the staff and get your holds placed. We do it on paper when we're offline. Um, okay. And your e-materials will be available because our contract with our current vendor goes through the end of June, so they'll still be able to authenticate your, your oh, nice. library card, so you'll nice. be able to get your e-books um, over that weekend. So. Awesome. Yes. Yes, one thing. Mm -hmm. Who have holds at all participating libraries? That is an option for CCS member library patrons. Like I showed you, I could pick our pickup library. Okay, so... I think if I just looked at this, I would think, uh-oh, from now on I have to pick up my holds and participate in libraries. Oh, go to them physically. 
That's a good point. Like, I would be, I think I would be a little confused by that. Well, what Cindy, that bookmark they provided was specifically from CCS, just thinking about, you know, all 24 libraries that are part of that consortium are going to want to say things in different ways. So what you see there is not anything that we in-house produced. So anything that you say right now, like you said, we didn't print 5,000 of them or anything like that. Right. Yeah. So, right. Right. so you know, any of your thoughts, you know, we'll definitely take into consideration. If holds at all participating libraries, I would think, oh, gosh, we'll that, that stinks. Yeah. I so what would you say? Here or? Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, now we have to go to Peru. Yeah. I know that they would, in, in reality, no, I, would be, sure. I would think, okay, no, that doesn't right. even make, that's not even common sense. You know, why would they go backward? Yeah. But it just, the way it works, I don't know. You probably don't, don't want to go pick up your audiobook in Gray's Lake or something. <laughs> 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 and I just say, forget that, about I it. Forget, forget about it. That day. I had, like you said, but, yeah. I don't know, maybe, but, you know. No, thank you. Appreciate you taking a look at that and giving us some feedback. Cindy, I don't know if you said this. All, all the consortium libraries are under the same schedule. So that until April 17th, everybody's okay. It's all, it's all the same. Um, one last thing, too. With, with this um, new interface and format, in our strategic plan, we had that we wanted to be able to send like text messages out if you were like, hey, you really like team programming or you really like, you know, that like you signed up for a specific, you know, that you really like specific um, like um, a class. Well, no, like uh, say I really liked crafting, and you know, like I can check mark it, and then all of a sudden, like, could you put in a and a, like a program that you're doing and then all of a sudden you had, you know, um, learners of, you know, crafting and all of a sudden that sent me a text message saying, hey, we have a program on crafting. Oh, she's yeah. doing a little investigating and stuff. Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't like, think... Like, like entering your programs like a book, like you would, like a temporary entry. Yeah, so... so, this is a good question for Susie. So in Communico, our new online event calendar, you can get notifications. You, you can get notifications after you've registered for something via email or text message. But my question for Susie, if you pick like a craft program and you say you want to get notified by text message, is there a thing that later you would get any craft programs that we have I don't here? Think there is. I think it's an interest button, like a like button. It's not yes. super clear. Yes. That's what yes. that yes. function yeah. is. Mm -hmm. But I think it's like like, and then it's not spelling it out that if I like this, then I get more emails like that. Yeah. That's a feature that we probably need to look more into and publicize, but... Okay, so there's nothing like it right now, but... Uh, there I is think there of, is a feature in there. I think it's just kind of... In out, this. Uh, in Communico, which okay. is our okay. event program. That's like, you know, when we have um, a technology class, you can mm -hmm. sign up. You want to be alerted every time you have a new technology class. Right. Okay, well, like so if you're a parent, you know, yeah. yeah. maybe you want to know all so the story time. times. Right, because that's what I'm looking for. So for the class, yeah. yeah. The program the program calendar software is very different than the, 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 the catalog. This. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Um, so, but they're both made to look like the website, so sometimes it gets confusing um, to people. Okay. All right, well, thank you for that. So can I just say uh, that Cindy has done an amazing job yeah. of yeah. putting yeah. 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 It's easy and it has a ton of moving parts and she has run a whole lot of classes and nice. taught a lot of people. So she really, really we are way ahead of some of the other libraries and they come to us in for so many ways. <laughs> I just wanted to give her credit because she has Thank really worked hard on this. She does yes. a great job. Yeah, it's very much. I enjoyed it. It's fun. We're well, good. We're well, good. Yeah. Um, all right, E is our next item of discussion with the trends affecting library. Susan, is this time sensitive? Is this something we need to discuss? It is not time right sensitive. I think we should push it to the next one. All right, we'll just put that over to the next one then. Uh, unfinished business. Other. <coughs> Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? Oh, can, I, can I ask a question? I'm sorry to, to, to pop it in there. Uh -huh. I, I just want to give it on record to apologize to Susan. <laughs> no, it's it's inappropriate. I, I, I very much respect Susan. It's inappropriate for me to raise my voice to that level. 
I understand that there's going to be disagreements, and it's, it's my fault for letting that affect in trying to talk over other people and then not listening to what Susan was putting out. And uh, I, I truly mean uh, the apology. I, I was totally unaware of what you were trying to put forth. And it, it's, 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 uh, it's something that I haven't worked on to make sure it doesn't happen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think I was waiting for a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Okay. Uh, maybe a roll call. Okay. Yes. Linda. Yes. 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 Yes.